Hello folks, I'm Ed Ackley. My wife Sharon and I have developed the Sidewinder Sluice Box. You've probably been seeing some of our videos that we've posted on YouTube and your, the Curiosity's building and um, I just wanted to do a little video to kind of explain a little bit about the Sluice Box. Uh, first of all, uh, for those of you that don't know it is in patent pending and we're still in the developmental stages of this uh, design and currently uh, today's May 19th we are actually on the third prototype um, what uh, we've got going with this last one this last model is another five foot long with a little bit tighter curves in it we've actually strengthened the vortex pattern in this design uh, even better than before we're very pleased with the results on all of these prototypes. We've been capturing really, really tiny gold, the, the hard stuff to catch in conventional sluice boxes. Uh, now, my wife and I, uh, you know, we've been operating just about every kind of sluice box known for many years, and I have built some incredible sluice boxes that I've tried all the conventional methods, miners, moss, uh, short, low profile uh, high vacuum riffles that we've uh, played with all types of rib matting you name it um, and most of them I mean, they're very effective you know there's no doubt about it we've trapped gold all over the place uh, but what got us on to this thought is that the vortex generating a vortex in a liquid flow is one of the most powerful forces in nature um, with liquid with water the liquid water being about eight pounds per gallon when you can whip it into a spiral you've got a tremendous amount of energy going in a vortex now liquid motion being such that in a circle pattern like that can actually trap heavies along the bottom of uh, say in a natural stream would be a bedrock shelf or some obstruction um, in the sluice box, it's the floor. The floor is the is the thing. We all know that gold's going to be trapped along the bottom, um, but the trick is is how to keep capturing it in layers, sedimentary layers. So uh, there's been some concern and a lot of questions from some of the folks wondering why are these blonde sands showing up in our videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick little demo here, uh, just a, a little um, kind of a fun little thing to kind of show you how this thing works. This will be in a glass jar. We're going to kind of show you uh, the way this works in water. So anyway, uh, for now, let's go take a look at that and then we'll talk more later. Uh, but I uh, just wanted to say hi and introduce ourselves a little bit and clear up a few things. And as always, we welcome your concerns and your comments, and thank you very much for watching our videos. Just uh, stay in touch. Eventually, we will be offering some of these for sale. We have a kind of a goal that uh, we plan to collect the first pound of gold before any of these are going to be offered to anybody. Uh, it might sound greedy, but actually it's just, it's just a fun little thing. It's a, it's a goal that we've set amongst ourselves, and we will keep you informed. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, we've had a lot of uh, interest in how the Sidewinder works. We're going to do a little demo here to show what happens in a vortex motion. This is more like a fourth grade science project, but we're going to show you why you're seeing the blonde sands on the top of the piles in the vortex. As Sean Connery would say, shaken, not stirred. This is the easiest way to stir you to get the vortex started. Now you see what's happening with the sand motion in a vortex. You got your lights and heavies suspended in a vortex. And what we're going to do is we're going to stir this for a while in a nice spiral motion, just exactly like the Sidewinder does in those curves. And we're going to set her down. And then we're going to show you where the black sands and the goodies are and where the blonde sands are. This should make sense to some of you folks that are trying to figure out why you're seeing the blonde sand. Okay.
Okay, we've let that settle down just a little bit, and I'm hopeful that uh, you can see the the sediment layers. I don't know if there's enough light here to kind of show what's going on, but you can see the lighter blonde sands up on the top, and the very dark and heavies at the bottom. Now, any gold would be in the very center of the bottom of this circle, which would be the center of the vortex. So that's basically how it works. Um, this little demonstration in this glass vial was to kind of show um, a little bit about what we're talking about. For the concentrating effect of the Sidewinder sluice box. This is Ed Eckley and I just wanted to uh, kind of make this a little bit uh, a little more apparent how the how the system works. We'll be talking to you soon, folks.